Hello, everyone. Happy Friday. Thanks for your patience. I am now I'm ready to get going. That's a I couldn't find my crypts. <laughs> and you know where I found them? This was a first. They're at the bottom of my backpack, all spilled out. My whole backpack is just beautiful silver crimps right now. Um, so I grabbed what I needed for today. And I think I'm I think I'm good to get going now. So I hope you're having a good Friday. And maybe you're also spilling your crimps, and that's okay. <laughs> I didn't know that I had spilled my crimps. It was like, didn't aren't they like I was pretty sure they were in here, but clearly they didn't make it back in one of my little travel kits. They were outside of it. And it turns out those bottles could open up. We got Jesse in the comments. We got all the bead friends with us. Hello, Eloise and Sherry. Uh, we're streaming to YouTube and Facebook. Usually YouTube these days has a lot more folks. If you're someone who likes the extra chatter, maybe you might, might want to hop on hop on over to the Sam's Beach Shop YouTube channel. But regardless of where you watch, welcome. I'm excited just to have a nice, easygoing end of the week stream with you all. And I, if you're beating along, let me know. Tell me what you're working on. Um, I have a palette of goodies that I'll be working with, but we're going to jump in in a minute. What is going on right now? Rachel and I today were doing some beadbox planning for some of our future months. We try to, at this point, it's kind of amazing. We're like, we're working on the, the later half of the year right now. Um, It has been a strange crimp week. Yeah, are you are you referencing the Sarah stream on Tuesday where Sarah crimped it and then it, and then it was like the first time on a camera and her crimp had just it just came undone. So maybe it's a maybe it's just the theme of this week is you know sometimes we just have to crimp again. <laughs> in this case, I had to just find my crimps in the first place. Brooks working on a silky project today. What like silver silk? What? What sort of silver silk project? Or are you are you nodding with silk? I, there's two ways I could read that. Sherry says I can't see you on the app. Yeah, so the classes stream to the Sam's Beach Shop YouTube channel and the Sam's Beach Shop Facebook page. Uh, the live sales are what go to the app and website. It's a little different setup we have for each. Um, I wouldn't be able to stream to YouTube if I streamed to the app. So we like to use YouTube because it becomes an archive. So hello to folks in the future. Um, I hope you enjoy today's replay of this bronzite bracelet project. I've got part of the design mapped out. I'm also going to want to kind of finish, kind of finish designing it with all of you today. Um, I really like the palette. So once I flip around the camera, I'll show that to all of you. What happened to Sarah? I didn't see. Is she okay? She already hurt her thumb a few months ago. <laughs> no. Oh, geez. Facebook suddenly just stops. Oh no. Okay, well, it looks like most folks are on YouTube right now. So I'm gonna flip around the camera and we can chat the beads we're working with today. Okay, make sure you're getting comfortable. And let me show you what we've got going on here. My fan's not too loud. It's really lovely to have some air over here, <laughs> especially under the lights. Okay. So here's the palette I picked out for today. It started with, I saw we had some more bronzite from a very recent live sale. This is an old stock, gorgeous bronzite. You don't really see bronzite in this quality anymore. This is, this is what the stone became known for. And there's just not, there's not as much rough material available that looks like this these days. Um, so I was happy to have a little bit left. There's some on the website. So I wanted to design a bracelet, kind of more of a statement. See how big that is compared to my wrist. It'll be more of a statement bracelet. You could kind of probably adapt this into a necklace. And then I wanted to pick out some goodies to go with. So for a metal, grab some of our Greek metals. These are our carved donuts. Aren't they wildly amazing? These make great earrings. But in the case of the bracelet, I thought I could use them kind of adjacent to our focal. Probably not symmetrically, but start laying something out here. I grabbed a couple color colors of our new fairy tale flowers here. 
These are nice 10 millimeter flower size. They're drilled through, so they're pretty easy to use. Got a little bit more light here. Can you guys see okay? I feel like I got some shadows today. I might be able to turn it up. Maybe. Maybe not. Hope you can see that okay. And then, so I thought those would be nice, especially I want to blend some of those colors together. And then I wanted one more stone. And this is one of my favorite neutrals that I've shown on a live cell recently. I got them in Tucson. They're like some sort of mixed agate. And there's so many trade names for agates and jasper. So I decided that I was gonna name this one. And I called this caramel agate. I'll try to put it on white for you to see if you can see it better. Or maybe it's on black. You can see those colors. Isn't that gorgeous? Actually, it stands out really nicely on black. Maybe future streams will be like a really nice black. Just ignore the dust on it. This is my mouse pad. <laughs> but you can actually see it a lot better. Okay, so here's what we're working with today. I was hoping to do a mix of stringing and wire. So let's talk through some of our possibilities here. Sarah stabbed her finger with a screwdriver. Oh my gosh. What? Oh my goodness. Oh, Sarah, she's okay. I'll have a text her. Oh my goodness. All right, so we know that we want this to be our focal. We might end up decorating with some with some wire. I'm wanting the donut to be also part of the design if possible. Otherwise, we'll just make some matching earrings. We do have a fair amount of beads here, and we could save the donuts for earrings here. Unless I go steal some more donuts. Imagine how cute those earrings would be. I didn't know you could stab yourself with a screwdriver. That's that's awful. Oh my goodness, Sarah. <laughs> and then we just have we have a lot of colored options on this caramel agate. Let me pour some off. Either we can use it as the mix, or we could pick out some of our favorite colors in it. I really like this tone a lot. Yeah, so everything I am show using in today's class is in stock. I try to I check that before the sale. So in case you did want to recreate any of the designs we come up with today, you absolutely can. I have a collection link in this video that has all of these items in it. It also has another finish option. The light keeps changing on these. Interesting. I have another finish, the green patina on these donuts as well in stock. All right, that'll be funny for the caramel I get. There's no way to raise up the camera a bit, so I can actually have some room to work here. Well, let's begin. All right, y'all, ready for some bead time? I hope it get. I hope. I hope just me sitting down gets you to just start making something too. Uh, my goal is not complex today. I was. I loved. Shar had that. On the Make It in May challenge, she had the easy win end of last week. And I was like, that sounds lovely to end this week, too. The theme today is silky. And I think you can take the challenges as you will, if that means silk or the texture or whatnot. So I'm thinking we do kind of a Sarah-style bracelet. So... Kind of design this in sections so if you have the bronze on one side and then some of the agates it just gives us more options if you want to mix in wire accents versus stringing accents i think blending those textures is always so nice trying to see how we could i wonder if i could turn the donut into a clasp if I make that the loop, I can make a clasp with wire that fits into the donut. In a time like the present, right? 
So we'll come back around to that. So I'm thinking I want to string the flowers. Let's keep a ruler nearby so I don't make the world's largest bracelet. <laughs> Do you guys ever have to resize your bracelets when you, if you make them 12 inches long? This is the bracelet. This is the ruler I use for listing gems. It goes up to 18 inches, which is so helpful. I used to use a 12 inch ruler and be like, this seems like I'm wasting time here. <laughs> so we're gonna start simply. I have some ideas for possibly doing some wire wraps or just wire links with the caramel agate, I think would be pretty. Otherwise, string them possibly could be nice with some, some, some sort of spacer. So let's start on this side. Otherwise, I do it all strung. That feels too simple. I, I don't want, I'm, not, I'm not feeling that simple today. I love, Sarah reminded me of how much I like this bronze color. I actually don't know if this is one we carry in the shop, but you could use any soft flex speed lawn. will work great here as long as it fits through the holes. This is like a medium size. I think I'm just, I'm going to, I think I want to be able to wrap the pendant. So I'm just going to string one portion of my bracelet here. So that can, we'll make that about a three inch section. So I like to add on, so if I do my, know my section to be three inches, I like to add on around an inch and a half or so for each crimp. So that'll make it add another, another three inches for a total of six inches. Let me show y'all the Zeron crimpers that I'm obsessed with. So we'll go ahead and start with a crimp. I'm using a two millimeter crimp. If you look on the roll, it'll tell you there to what size crimp feed or tube you can use. So I'm gonna use a two millimeter crimp tube. That work wonderfully. <gasps> Wanda, this just Pamela. Pamela says, make your famous clasp hook. I know, I, I think we might be evolving that today. I wanna make a clasp hook that will fit with this. It might not work, but we're gonna, sure as we're gonna try. Like it theoretically would work, but like I'm starting to see the why maybe it couldn't work. So let's we'll we'll try that out. I don't well because this is bronze. I could put this right on. I was just gonna attach it with something else, but there's no reason I couldn't. And you, of course, also have the option of adding on a bead, a little decorative piece element. There's, no, there's not only one way to crimp. So if we, as long as that thread can go back through the bead twice, being our operative challenge here, because not all check beads are going to want this thick of a distributed wire. Okay, nope. <laughs> I take that back. We're not going to do that idea. We'll just do a, a, a standard crimp on that one. All right, so I got my two millimeter crimp tube. I'm just going to attach it directly to my donut. I'm going to do it pretty tight because I want it to hold that donut pretty securely. So I can actually come grab my short end. Pull that to tighten it. Alrighty. Hoping that'll just help give some structure here. These are the Zeron crimpers that I finally got for myself. You can see over here, see that giant tooth there at the bottom? The same tooth works for size one, two, and three crimps, which is quite convenient here. So I'm gonna get my wires uncrossed. Make sure that's still as tight as I want. And then put the tooth between my wires. This is this is what will give you the strongest crimp possible. Because it's essentially your goal. It's not it doesn't always happen perfectly, is to separate the wires. And then in the upper parts here of the Zerons, you see how there's like, it looks like a little snowman. Each of those is for closing the crimp of a size one, two, or three crimp. So I'm gonna use the middle one 
because that one is designed for a two milliliter crimp. So I'm gonna put the crimp in notch number two. This is where it varies a little bit from your standard crimping pliers. And just squeeze, bringing my little piece of macaroni together. And then I like to just come in with the flat tips of these and just make sure that crimp is fully closed. I'm not squeezing too hard, but I am trying to bring that together to have a pretty nice crimp. Because we already know we can't get two threads of this back through that check bead, let's just go ahead and cut off our extra, string, extra stringing wire. Has anyone been feeling like not as good about their crimping lately? I remember when we first did our did our first crimping class a few years ago. That's back when I, I was only doing wire and I didn't realize how many folks in the community were like not feeling super comfortable about their crimps. Um, so if there are any folks out there who are just like, I'm still struggling with my, with your, with my crimping, like, let me know. Hopefully I can try to help or at least gather some help from our friends like Sarah Ayler at Softlex, Sarah Lovecraft, and try to help you out so you feel confident about your about your crimps. Um, I can already tell I'm going to want some sort of spacer here. I love these these little new little flowers are so cute. I'm thinking before the next section I want to do a little spacer. I've got some gold line crystal ones from the shop. These are Toho 11 -0. You can search on the site and see what if it's in a palette right now or if it's on available on its own. Gold lined rainbow crystal. So maybe just search rainbow crystal should pop up. So these should fit on this thread. There we go. That golden element would be nice with the bronze here. All right, I've got to, I'm just kind of keeping an eye on my length here. I'm, my wrist is only seven inches. So the more of these I use, the less of the caramel agate I get to use. Could also theoretically always do another strand, but. <laughs> we're going to set up and start, we're going to start, we're going to do it as simple as possible. <laughs> I don't know if ever, any project I've ever done has stayed on course with the original trajectory. Melanie says she has these crimpers. Yeah, they're, they're really nice. They've become my go-to flat nose pliers. Or if you were to check bead that's you're not able to get all the way through, it's usually just an extra wash in the hole. This is a new shape, so always it's nice to actually get to experiment more with it. Anytime they add a wash, there's always an opportunity for some wash or something from the tumbling process to get in there. I'm also using a pretty thick beading wire, which is not necessary for the types of beads I'm using. Now I'm just going to switch beads. Generally with check beads, I recommend like a medium or yeah, it's just that the holes aren't actually this big. There we go. All right. So there's one section. So the idea is that that could go to our pendant. And then I'd love to round up more of this with the caramel agate and have a bracelet, something like that. I think will be pretty. I really like these dark brown tones. I'm gonna grab more of those. This one like almost looks like bronzite to me. Oh, nice. Unless I can make like a gradient of it, maybe just stick with this dark brown. Let me get caught up in comments here for a moment. Yeah, if you're looking for the donuts, it's D O N U T. Thank you, Susie. Um, we also have the collection linked below this video. 
All right, let's finish. I'm going to leave that crimp open. Just give us give ourselves some options on length here. So leave a, you can always put a bead stopper, but I'm not that worried. Let's go to the pendant next and decide how we want to tackle it. There's unlimited options here based on how much we want to decorate it. So general concept and ending is I want to have a loop on either side, but then I'm deciding if I want to have anything else with the stone. It is quite a nice stone, so that there's something to be said about not doing too much with it. I do feel like some sort of like spiral or something could be kind of fun. Even I could even see like a spiral on either side here. Ooh, that's exactly what I want to do. Spiral on either side. It'll also kind of lock it in place nicer. So for this 20, 22 gauge wire should be good. I don't think for a spiral, I don't think I would want to use 24. There's a 20. It's 22. I think I'm going to start this out with 22 and see how we like it. This is another, looks like experiment number one. I'm going to give myself lots of wire here. I'm going to give myself about two feet to start. I like to start by warming up my wire, so I grab it with my flat nose, which these days are my crimpers, and just run my hands all the way down the wire. Helps to warm it, straighten it. It actually also starts to work hard in it a little bit, which is not a bad thing. Why are my beads giving me so much trouble today? This sometimes also I can tell this one looks like they tried to drill it twice, so I might just not be. I can see. Oh, I can see the. I can see the light at the end of the hole. <laughs> I can see the light, y'all. So I just need to get the wire to follow the right path. There we go. You see how they're like? There's almost two drill holes there. It looks like they had to. They had to drill it twice to get through this pendant. Now we're good to go. I'm going to bring it to the middle because I intentionally want to have lots of extra wire to complete the spirals. The crimpers that I'm using are Zerons. These are made in the US. They're built to last. They're really nice. They've been recommended to me for a long time, but to me by Nile, and I finally got them for the shop. Last I checked, we had a couple pairs left in stock. They, we went pretty quick the first batch. So we're going to start with some wrapped loops. So take off my pendant for now. Guys, don't let me cut my wire, okay? The goal is not to cut the wire right now. Go ahead and bend that 90 degrees. And I'm gonna grab my bail making pliers for this. Just have some more consistent size loops. I'm gonna do the second step and see how that size looks. So you wanna bring it above the wire. So that you can bring the wire around. I'm also thinking just for extra structural integrity of this bracelet, I'm going to go ahead and put it around a second time. So just keep adjusting the pliers as needed so that it lets you get around the same size part of the bail pliers. So in this case, now we have two coils there. That's usually like to get stuck on the pliers. We're going to leave this long tail because we're going to turn that into a spiral. But first, let's go ahead and do some wrap loops. Most folks don't like to do their wrappings with their non-dominant hand. That is just how I learned from Rachel Malice. And it, I think it's also probably how I did, because she like retaught me all my wire a few years ago. I'm pretty sure it's how I used to do it too, because it feels very natural to me. So there's three wraps. I'm not loving the tidiness of my coils. It's something I've always I, I notice. So these are great. See how precise the tips of these are? That'll let me come in and do some gentle squeezes either direction on the coils. 
And then I always feel like they look like professional coils from that. I can also tighten the coils on the loop. It's the loops themselves. Just like that. If you were to want to turn this into a two strand piece, you could split open these loops and have two connection points on either side of the pendant. All right, let's go ahead and grab the pendant. Is anyone else obsessed with bronze right now? I am obsessed. You got the Zeron bent nose. I haven't tried the Zeron bent nose. That sounds very fun. All right, so just ignore this big old piece of wire. We're going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side first. So in terms of loop, we are going to want the loops ultimately to be the same length, the same direction. So let's think about that for a moment here. It doesn't matter which one, but I just want them to match. So I think I'm going to make a goal of them being flat with each other. So they'll both be facing, being open like this. So that means we need to make our loops See, I'm just paying attention to the direction of this loop, so I'm going to match that. So the wire go, gets bent in the direction of that loop. The loop's going this way, so the wire continues in the same plane. Hopefully I gave myself enough room here. Come in with my bail making pliers, which is nice because it means my loop will be the exact same size. Rotating the pliers as needed. <laughs> I've got like a photo in my face, extra wires in my face. It's like this is just the extra challenge piece. From there, let's go ahead and do our wrap loops. If you want to make your wrap loops better, the main tip I can give you is bring. See, this is my working wire here. I pushed it towards the pliers. I started my loop and it often starts to go this way, come away from the pliers. As I did that, that first wrap, I'm pushing it against the pliers so that when I come to do my first coil, the first coil is up against the loop. I'm going to keep going to tighten this all up and fill the space there. This will also help to secure our bronzite done in place. Looks like my wire got turned a little bit, so I'm just going to turn that. I'll have to turn that in a moment just to match. But basically, each are at the same Let's get these back in, in line with each other. All right, everyone with me so far? <laughs> hey, Cindy, good to see you. Glad you found the stream. All right, the goal here is to turn, is to add decorative loops here and here. So we got to decide that if we do, if I do my, <laughs> if I do my spiral with this much wire, they're going to be enormous. So my gut is just to start with less. So I'll give you a measurement so you can get a sense. This is with the 20, wait, no, I didn't. I grabbed cut from the 22 gauge one. This is 22 gauge. Let's do about, I want a decent size spiral. We'll try five inches. And if you, if we think it's too big, um, there won't be anything I could do at this point. <laughs> but there's, if that means you could adjust yours. So I'm going to cut it at an angle. This is just a subtle detail. It's not fully necessary, but it helps get your spiral going. I've got to get this phone out of my face for a second so I can see this tiny little wire to start it. 
because my goal is now to bend the wire in the direction it's already pointing. Because I cut out a flush, the wire's like, imagine this whole bit is wire here, and it's flush cut here at an angle. I want to this side to bend in to start a nice tight coil. So I'm going to grab the tip. Wow, this is so much easier with these precision pliers. Wow, that remember how much harder that was on the last spiral spiral class? I like to do some extra squeezing here in the middle just to get things tightened up and almost usually kind of makes it almost like an invisible start to the spiral. So I'm just kind of squeezing both flat and against itself. So you have the tiniest little flex. See that? That's the start of your spiral. Uh, these are Zeron crimpers. Again, lots of interesting folks. The Zeron crimpers are from the shop. We carry them now. If they, if you are seeing them as sold out, go ahead and join the wait list. We'll go ahead and get another batch ordered. They have been very popular. And it looks like we need to get some of the other Zeron crimpers in too. Current Zeron tools in. So it's just a little bit at a time. I'm using pressure from my pointer finger here as I do the turn. I'm really turning it with my pliers. See, I'm doing small moments back and forth like this. And you're going to just continue this all the way down the wire. I used to make spirals on everything. I used I used them to decorate literally every bead I was obsessed. So it's fun to bring them out again. All right, see, this, these flat notes are only going to get me so far because then they become crimping pliers. So we're going to do a quick tool switch here. That's actually a little easy to hold now, given this massive spiral we're making. We're getting there, folks. All right, before I get too close, we have the option now if you want to do a slight little bit of work hardening. Got a steel bench block here, which you can also grab at the shop. We finally have some bench blocks in stock. And you can use a nylon hammer if you don't want to mirror your wire quite as much. I tend to not mind the look. They'll make it a little bit more flat looking, which for a spiral can be quite pretty. I'm just lightly tapping just to keep it even, moving around the hammer, lightly tapping. And I flipped it over and do some more. I'm kind of doing more, I'm just kind of doing extra to see how far we can push it. Actually, very pretty looking. So this whole area is pretty work hard and where I hit it with the hammer. I did, it looks like I hit it up until about this point here. So it's gonna be a little bit harder. Work hard wire does not want to be bent more. It's more likely to snap. So don't do what I do. I'm gonna try to guide the wire over and start to see how I want it to lay. Noticing it's a little loose, partially just because of where the wire's coming in from. So I'm gonna help tuck in the wire back here a bit. Let me see if there's anything else I can do to get this cleaned up. I can almost actually cover it, have it cover itself a bit. Alrighty, there's one side. You see how the hammering added a nice sheen to it? It really makes a difference um, and also means you, you know I know that spiral is not gonna come unwound which is a huge plus here 
So all we have to do is do it again. <laughs> exactly the same. So we know that this wire needs to come around a bit more. I'm gonna go ahead and measure our five inches. And we get to make another fun spiral. So I'm gonna take my flush side. The flat side is your flush side. Normally you cut like this. I'm gonna turn that to make a point on my wire. Come with my Zeron crimpers, which have my flat tips. And spot the side. It's a little hard to spot, so don't worry about it if you can't see it right now. Bend that in on itself. Oh, it was so thin. I did it so thin that time that I pretty much just snapped what I had there off. So I just bent the next little bit of wire over. And go ahead and tighten that. One thing I used to do is I used to actually start by doing a little bit of hammering, just the tiniest bit on the tip of the center part of my coil. You wanna make sure not to get any more of the wire. So I'm gonna use the, just the edge point here and just lightly tap it. It's another way to get the center of your coil pretty invisible looking. Flip it over. And now we can start off our coil. Does anyone else think coils are fun? Do you use them? And where, when do you tend to use them? They're, they're a fun way to like make a quick head pin for like some earrings. I would often take like a rectangle or square bead, anything like any sort of flat style bead and use a spiral to keep it facing forward on earrings because you can fold the spiral up onto the, onto the bead and it helps hold it in place. Put that back over, I find it a little bit easier coming this direction, but it does work both ways. This is just more what I'm accustomed to. So he says, I love making coils that hide so many sins. What's, what's like, you mean in the coil itself? Or use a co oh, or do you like use the coil to like cover up something else? Fire switch. Lori says I use them to make earring posts. Oh, like this is your earring post, and then you have a piece of wire coming the back, and then you have a loop here. Is that kind of what you're describing? That sounds fun. I want to try that. All right, as we start to get closer, we're gonna to wanna to hammer this soon. So you can flip it out of the way. And we'll come in to do our next batch of hammering. I'm using the flat side of my hammer. That helps maintain the shape a lot better. If I use this side, the wires would start to spread. This side's meant for texturing and whatnot. Start light with your hammering. This is, the copper bar is very soft. It will, it will start. It'll start flattening, don't worry. Also, this is just fun. <laughs> you should be having, if you're making jewelry, you should be having fun, right? Like, this is, you gotta find the techniques where you're like, ooh, I wanna do that again. Hammer coils all day long. All right, let's 
flip it gently back over and start to guide that into place. I'm intentionally let kind of going over the starting wire. What fun. We raised up a little bit from it. It's pretty normal. See what I can do to get things tightened up here. This would just be a fun, you could turn that into a beautiful pendant, hang some more beads from down there. But I think that'll make a nice statement focal for our bracelet. If I wanted the challenge, I could try to incorporate a spiral into our clasp as well, maybe. Very like Egyptian type look to it, all the geometry of the spiral. So I really like where this is heading. So we have like accents there, we have accents on the flowers, we've got texture accents on the donut itself. The stones are more than one tone here as well. So it's kind of like that that's become a design theme throughout all these extra small, smaller touches. I'm actually picking out some of my favorite beads here and maybe it means I want some more variety. I just want to actually pick the beads to use. So let's do a length check-in. We're already at almost six inches. We've only got a little bit more to work with. So that's actually an argument for shortening that section a bit, since our clasp is gonna be a little big. That'll give us a couple inches now, inch and a half or two, two. Sorry, let me shift up a little bit. There we go. We got us a little bit more space for maxing out seven inches. I still have a little bit more room to play around with the caramel agate. All right, so I'm gonna come in and make some loops with 20 gauge. We're gonna do some simple loops. The 20 gauge will be nice, I think. That it won't, we won't want to do any wrap loops and it'll give us some adjustability here. It's nice to work from one length of it. So I'm gonna cut. Yeah, braces do take some beating. So uh, Margaret made the comment about, she's wondering about if this, these sorts of accents will work on a bracelet or we might get caught on something. It's possible. So you could definitely adapt that into a neck into a pendant. I think it honestly could work as a bracelet as well, especially if it's faced up. And because they're so work hard, I don't think it's. It won't, I'm not too. I don't know. I, I'm not too too worried. I'm wor I'm willing to take the risk. <laughs> I'll report back and see. And we'll see how it how it holds up as a bracelet. I'll be our tester. If anything, this is just a fun experiment on some adding some little wire accents to things like this. Or right, just do our first simple loop. Go ahead and bend 90 degrees. So these are the Zuron round nose. Rachel, did we get the Zuron round nose or was I just testing these out? Let's see if those, these ones will work. They're, they only go up to a certain size. So I'm gonna see if these will work. Okay. We also got the Zuron cutters in. All right, this will work. Let's 
Let's see if the caramel agates like the 20 gauge. It looks like we're good. I like to make my loops perpendicular to each other. Just kind of interlock nicely. It's not, it might be kind of arbitrary. It, it pretty much is. But I, I heard a tip from uh, someone who makes rosaries years back about how she makes all of her loops perpendicular to each other. So basically if not facing the same direction. And she's she says she has good luck with that for her rosaries. So for someone who does that many simple loops, I was like, I'm just gonna heed that advice. All right, so we're gonna make a little chain of these. Make sure to come within your, with your flush cutter each time because that will not be a flush cut end. Working from one piece of wire. The amount you're bending will will depend on how big your loop is and where you're working, where you're coming, where <laughs> like what part of the round of pliers you're using. I keep coming in with a little bit too big of a section, having to adjust, but working okay. You have some room to adjust your simple loops, just not too much. Debbie says it could put like a glue. Oh, for the coils. And what you would and you would put some glue below the coil. That's actually you could put glue and then you could clamp it while it's gluing to keep them down. That's actually not a bad idea. I've never thought to use glue with wire. But it does make sense, doesn't it? We don't actually need too many of these. We've got, <laughs> I've only done two. <laughs> You're like, oh, I, keep... I have too many pliers over here that I keep not grabbing the right flyer. So all I need right now, a very select number of pliers. gloss on this caramel agate. It's a really beautiful brown mix. All right, so if you want your loops to be different directions, you just want your, you would just have the loop facing you and bend it away because this wire will come right back at us to make the loop. All right, I think we're like about ready to put start putting this bracelet together and we just need a clasp. So let's see where we're at here and see how big our clasp can be. I'm glad we didn't crimp that earlier because that gave us a lot more adjustability here. Let's go ahead and link these guys together. So just open your links like a jump ring. I know most of you know this, but it's always good to mention because we have some folks who are just starting out with their wire and it is important. So I'm taking my loop and they're at my open end, pulling it towards myself, exactly like you would do with a jump ring. You don't want to go out because that's your, you're going to mess up the shape, beautiful loop you just made. And then come right back down. Guys, how do we already get to seven inches of beads? <laughs> this is why I always end up with these massive bracelets. <laughs> I have a lot of like eight inch bracelets. Like I can't wear this. Cause right now I'm very limited in what I can do with my um, 
class. It's possible. <laughs> I'm gonna go ahead and crimp this to get an exact length because I don't. I know. I don't want to take off any more from. Well, do I balance? I do three of those and three of these. I was liking the look of it. This will buy us some length. We can add extra beads as dangles and whatnot if we want. <laughs> Laura says, bite the bullet, make the nuggets. I know it does seem like it might want to be a necklace. I was just like really wanting to make a bracelet. <laughs> so we're. Just, I, would, I want to do this as a bracelet just because you can. You can then turn this into a necklace super easily. Just add link to any of these sections and make it a necklace. Maybe even turn this. Oh yeah, it does. Look how beautiful this is turned with the beads dangling down from it. It's quite nice. <laughs> I've been wearing a lot of bracelets lately, so I'm going to make this one a bracelet. I do appreciate all of you guys' wonderful ideas. Let's just go ahead and crimp it right on to our pendant. So I really can't go back. <laughs> we're going to lock in our answer. Final answer, bracelet. <laughs> right. Go ahead and pull that somewhat tight. You don't want that too tight. Go ahead and uncross my wires as best I can. Come up with that giant tooth there of the Zurons. And crimp between. Yeah, that step is so much easier on these pliers because the tooth is huge. Come in to the second size option of the snowman and bring it together. And then I like to finish it off with the flat nose. Alrighty, this is at a much better length for where for needing a clasp now. See, so we're at uh, just about we're at six and a half inches, including the last loop here. So let's go start working on our clasp. This is our second experiment to end today. I do like putting beads in the clasp, but it would have to be a pretty small bead. Maybe in this case, it could just be a spiral. I'm kind of I'm mapping in my head right now. I think I see an option for it. Alrighty, here. Zooming in just to get a better view as we work on this class. This might take two takes. That's often what I find with wire. Take one shows you what the wire wants to do, and second take, you do what you want to do. Give myself more than I think. I'm gonna give myself at least a foot here. Warm up our wire. And we're gonna start with the hook side of the clasp. This is the piece I was like most curious about if I'm actually gonna be hooking this on to the donut. It just needs this hook, the shape of the hook just needs to be secure enough and big enough to get to the loop itself. Yeah, there's no reason that shouldn't work. I'm gonna do more of a, less of a rounded class than I typically do because I think it'll help secure it onto the class better. So let's go ahead and fold over about an inch. That should be, it's actually no, I wonder if that's not gonna be enough. Okay. 
want some extra here. So I'm going to fold over well over an inch. Bring that together. So we're just working those ends of the wire together to make a nice conjoined wire twin there. I feel like I messed it up a little bit while I was doing that. So this is the part we'll use to actually make the clasp. So we'll start there just to make sure the clasp itself is working before we start getting all fancy with the spiral. It needs to be at least that big. Okay. So I usually make this part rounded. I'm curious, I also could have done like two, two bends. I wanted it to be pretty flat to help get it to secure onto that donut better. It's actually a little big. It was a little shorter, which it would be a little shorter if I turned up the end. So if this was a bracelet, you come on and hook it. Something like that, theoretically. I don't know how feasible this clasp is gonna be because it doesn't act like a normal clasp would. You guys see the kind of the conundrum I'm seeing here? We're just gonna have to see and then see if it actually works. Well, if it, it'll be like, because it, it can't, because of how I did it, it can't hook over. I'm getting stuck. It needs to be more rounded if it's going to hook over. <laughs> I'm cutting, I'm cut it. I'm going to try a more rounded version. And I could make it more of a toggle, it's true. The toggle bar has to be just the right size. I always get a little nervous about that. So I'm come with some bail making pliers. We'll just use a larger one. And use the fourth step on these bail making pliers. We're in the exact opposite direction now. And I have a feeling we're going to want to come in between the two. <laughs> this is the fun thing about wire design on the flies. Try that again, something in between those. Okay, I did like a little bit more rounded version of the initial one. We're just gonna try it and see if it works. If it doesn't, that's okay. We gotta at least figure out if this has a chance here. So it has a little bit of extra length, which is perfect. We wanna leave that. And go ahead, give us some space that we're gonna fill in with coils and possibly even a decorative coil. So wraps and coils here. Oh, sorry if I got off camera, let me adjust my camera. Sorry about that. I'm using a 22 gauge wire right now. 
Sorry if I was off frame for a moment there, or a good long moment. And come in and do a wrap loop. I feel like we're getting close. Can you guys like kind of see where I'm heading with this? I don't have a lot of wire left to do a decorative part, but I think we have just enough. So I'm just calling that back until I get to the point where the wire comes together. And then I want to start including the wire as well. You could also take that wire and make it part of the whole clasp as well. The double, the doubled wire. I do think the doubled wire is very important for the hook itself, especially not when if you're using anything thinner than 18 gauge. I still feel like this class might be mad at us once we actually do it, once we actually start using it. But more so, I wanted to test out if this, if I could still decorate this with a spiral. <laughs> which you guys might point out might give another point to catch. But this is our risky bracelet here. We're, taking, we're, we're doing it full stride. Cindy, I'm going to look at your comment in just a moment. I'm curious what your idea is. All right, so we're doing starting the coil the exact same way. a little bit more. My hands are getting tired here. The alternative here is I can just make the other side of this a more normal catch for, more normal loop for this hook. So that it does not be reliant on the donut is like is, is a simpler solution here. Okay, we actually have enough wire for this. A nice little decorative coil as well. Start to guide that into place. I have to say, I like the look of a of the coil on the clasp. I do want to bring it downwards, just so it gives it less opportunity. So I need to actually coil it a little bit tighter to use up that last little bit of wire here. It's quite a pretty clasp style here. And we still you still can hammer it if you just bend it out for a moment. You can still get your hammer time in. I know so Jane, which is who's Michelle here in the comments, works for the shop. We did a class together and Michelle's all about spirals. And she that was the main um, tip you were giving on the class, which I was like using much more fine tip tools helps immensely for making the coils. back in. You could theoretically kind of like shape the coil to kind of like have a curve to it. I'm going to leave it as it really like the look of it. And if this is yeah, so the, the, 
the usability of this class is not there for this donut. Let me go back to Cindy's comment here. Sam gives a much longer piece of doubled wire and wrap a nice big loop over the bail making pliers. One of the bigger loops. Yeah, my gut here is I think I should just go ahead and hook it onto a nor much more standard loop. So we're just gonna do a quick wrap on the donut, add a loop, and then it should be good to go. I actually really like, what do you guys think of this? This is a, I'm kind of obsessed with this. <laughs> that is a uh, 22 gauge bare copper wire. We carry and grab some bare copper wire in the shop in any gauge you like right now. I want a thinner gauge to finish the wrapping on the donut. So the thinnest I have here in my bright copper is 24. Rachel Miles showed a nice donut wrap last Friday, so I definitely recommend checking out the end of Friday, last Friday's class. She had a smart way to do it. So far, I'm just, I just put it in the middle of the wire. I don't like I don't like that I did that. I, I should have done it on one side. I'm off frame, thank you. Okay, I'm gonna change the camera angle. This one you should just reference Rachel Klaus. She did such a nice job wrapping her donut. For this one, I'm just gonna use this. Looks like I have enough on this side of the wire anyway. I'll do a wrap around. I do make most of my jewelry right in front of my face. This is probably why it's my habit. It's like, like I literally think I hold the pieces in front of my like eyeballs, like always. All right, that worked well enough. Actually looks quite, I like how that came out. For the donut. I'm just gonna leave that wire there just in case I want it. And now we can use the remaining wire here to finish a loop for our piece. I think we want to do more than one loop. And I want to do a decent size loop. Not too big, but I want a decent size. I think I'll do the third step on my pliers. Just so I feel like the large loops look like a clasp because this gauge I'm using here is so thin. I want to go ahead and wrap that multiple times. To help give it some more structure. I'm gonna go ahead and do a third wrap around. I'm just taking the pliers out to because they get in the way of themselves for each wrap. Come on, there we go. All right, something like that should hold okay. I, next time I did this, I would probably say switch back to 22 gauge just to make those loops a little bit more secure. But let's go ahead and I'm reverse directions right now than I typically am, okay. There we go. I'm like fascinated with how this piece is gonna turn out. <laughs> this is not what I imagined when we first started. Um, I'm just doing lots of wraps here, this is just a little extra security. And then I left this wire to give us a little opportunity if you want to finish up here. You guessed it, with one last decorative loop.
Oh yeah, I do usually make coils like right in front of my eyeballs. I'm like, oh, I feel so far away from my coil. You can add coils to anything, y'all. Anything you want can be covered in a coil. Coils are super common, like when folks wrap cabs, it's because you can just take, instead of having to tuck in your wire, you can you just basically turn that extra wire into an accent like this. And it'll just, my goal here is I'm gonna kind of bring it in. to where all the jumbled mess appears, which I like the look of it, but like it's a jumbled mess plus accent. And that'll be a nice finishing touch here. Oh my gosh, y'all, we did so many coils. Go ahead and add on our clasp. Just gonna do some squeezes here. It'll just help work hard in the wires a little bit. Since I can't hammer it right now, even just squeezing it. Some extra times will give it a little bit more work hardened. It's actually kind of flattening, similar to how it would with the hammer. All right, that's just to, for the longevity of that clasp. Let's do a little test. Usually the this hoop would be turned the other way. So I'm just gonna gently turn that. I'm holding everything very securely here while I turn it. And there we go. Rachel, I might need your help to try to put actually put this on. Uh, sure. Yeah, I'm about to put the I'm putting the class pod. Okay, let's see how the loops are turning. All right, y'all, we have a bracelet. Oh, I love that you had the swirls at the end too. All the swirlies. I've only been like popping in and I this was my favorite one actually because I like the <laughs> swirl on the donut. Yeah, it's a that good would be proportion. some cool earrings too. Imagine yeah. that hanging like a, a little dangle. Like that would oh, be I a really that. cool earring design. All right, you wanna put it on? Yeah, I do. i I definitely need your help. Oh, I, that's so cool. The clasp is like integrated into the donut. I'll try it. Well the initial we initially Let's I see wanted if this fits you. It looks very small. Maybe if we do it over here. No, I definitely more narrow here. Really? I could always add I a little leg. I don't think I don't think this is gonna fit. <laughs> I was so concerned about making too big it's of a bracelet. Too, it's too short. Go just add a bead. <laughs> it only needs like one bead, and then we're done. Okay. Uh, we use twenty-two gauge. No, twenty gauge. We used for the simple loops. Let's do one more agate. It means we probably could have done a agate bead on the clasp itself. Oh well. Kind of a fun project. I like how this turned out. Thanks for designing on the fly with me, y'all. I hope you glean some ideas from this. If you don't make a coil after this, I don't. I don't know what. What? <laughs> I feel like that's the main thing we ended up doing was just finding any place we could add a coil. Do I hear some bead box chatter in the comments? The bead, we shipped the bead box, but we haven't. The reveal day is not till next week, Wednesday. Rachel and I will do our reveal on Friday. And that's also when the. Yeah, okay. So reveal day Wednesday, meaning you can start posting on Wednesday, because that's a week after shipment. That's eight days after shipment. And then. Oop. 
And then on Friday, so a week from today, Rachel and I will do a, the official unboxing of the May Sam's Bead box. Which if you're not joined, let us know. We'd love to have you come join our fun little bead club. The theme for May is very fun, so please don't spoil in the comments quite yet. Because some folks, many, many folks are waiting to get their box. We, we shipped on Wednesday, so most folks are going to get it tomorrow or Monday if they're in the U.S. And then folk, we've got to also give some patience to our international family. All right, something like that. Yeah, there's no way I'm going to be able to get this on myself. <laughs> oh. I did. Here we go. Let's see. I might just have to rotate. All I have to do is I just need to get that class rotated so that it, the coil faces me. But that's how the bracelet turned out. Look, <laughs> it looks like little eyes here. And then it goes into the clasp here. Let me go ahead and see if I can see a little bit better. Not on my wrist. Yeah, okay, so the class just is rotated 90 degrees off. I can't tell if I just flipped that. Regardless, I'll fix it if needed. There is our finished bracelet. Absolutely could be adapted into a necklace design. I just wanted to make sure we went over some of these ideas that could translate. So we can translate those spirals into that, into a pendant. You could hope you can glean something from the, some of the clasp ideas we we're having there. And we're able to fuse stringing and some wire work into one bracelet. Let me flip the camera back around. Oh my God, I know there's some, I apologize if I missed your comment. It's hard, it's very difficult to keep track of everything. Sometimes they start picking up a lot more quickly. Bridget got her beads, yay. <laughs> you get a lot of letters, Cindy, oh my goodness. Cindy said her order smells like leather. There must be some leather in there. Um, Martha says, I have a necklace with this type of coil. It stands up too much. How do you get laid back close to stone? I found, I found, I used to have that same problem with, with the, with the spirals um, for the earrings. Because, because it's a soft wire, it wants to kind of, it'll start to kind of um, slowly unravel. That's where the hammering is really helpful because anywhere you've hammered, it, it's not gonna untwist. It pretty much can't. Like these spirals, as I try to mess with them, snap back into place. So doing a little bit of hammering on the on the loop and a little bit next to the loop will mean your wire will have a lot less freedom of its own. It's a like less volition. That if that helps a bit, uh, Martha. We're using twenty. Yeah, we went over gauges. Glad, oh, I'm so glad, Melanie. Um, Lori says, does my heart good to see that others have the same approach to experimentation? Yeah, you should, when I do a new, try something new with wire, I usually have about seven versions. I was sitting on the plane trying to come up with um, leather ends, and I was going crazy. I just kept trying things, and some worked better than others. Um, my goodness, some of them just way too difficult to get the wire wrapped onto the leather. That's ultimately why we're like, why we have so many lovely options here, cast for cord ends. Just glue it right in. <laughs> way easier. Okay, I think I got most of the questions. If I didn't get your question, um, you can paste it into the comments of the YouTube video, if not, which is separate than like the live comment. So once I end it, you can add a comment to the video itself, so I can take a look there. 
Oh, hi, Mile. Mile's hanging out before cocktail time. Well, that sounds fun. <laughs> um, I want pictures. <laughs> Cecilia said, how can I buy someone the box this month? So if you, the cutoff has already happened for the May box since it is May 12th. If you send us an email, um, you might be able to sweet talk Jesse into getting uh, another, getting you a May box. It's very easy to get someone a box. So basically what you would do, Cecilia, is you go in and there's a gift button for the box. And you, it has you fill in the details for who you want to gift the box to and how many months um, you would like. That would be the best way to do it. And then you can message, you can email us, hello at sanscreechup.com if you want to, um, if you want the May box and Jesse can work his magic and get get a May box shipped out for what, for what you just subscribed. Even though it, it would normally be a June box at this point, um, you probably can convince Jesse. Melly says, can I see the hearts we sent? I don't think so, because it only loads in the comments, but thank you. <laughs> I appreciate it. Um, everyone, thank you so much. I have to hop off. Um, thanks for hanging me, hang with me on this Friday, and I'll see you next week. Have a great weekend, everyone. See you soon.